Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Jasper. I'm one of the co-founders of Good Time, and I also run product there. Uh, 죄송한데 이제 한국말이 좀 서툴러 가지고 영어로 할게요. <laughs> Uh, today I'm going to share with you my journey and how we got all of this started. And so, um, actually, my journey doesn't start in Silicon Valley. It starts in Silicon Hills, uh, where I went to school at the University of Texas to study computer science there. Um, it was a great place to stay because it was a, a very small community. There were technology people there, but it was also a lot of room for us to discover things. And one of the cool things was I went to school um, at the time that a startup program started, uh, the Longhorn Startup is what it was called, and that's when I first started falling in love with the concept of building startups. And while I was there, actually, I got an opportunity to take an internship out in San Francisco, and at that time, I didn't realize what that would do, but that would ultimately change uh, my whole future because it got me out to Silicon Valley. Um, once I was out there, I would spend three months in kind of a very, very magical and um, under, I, I never could under, understand before I went there how it would be like. And so from there, uh, I knew that after leaving, I would have to come back to this place if I wanted to see my full potential, as well as build a product that would eventually change the way that people and companies could interact in this world. So I went back uh, in 2011 in the summer. I joined as a product manager at this company called Yelp. Uh, you might know it today, but when I started, it was 120 people. We were crammed in this tiny three stories of this building next to Yerba Buena. Uh, it was quite hot all the time, and it didn't smell so good. Um, but by the time that I left, this company grew to 5,000. Uh, and you can imagine what kind of growth that is involved. Uh, we slowly took over two large buildings in San Francisco and eventually uh, outgrew that and uh, opened offices in Chicago, New York, and Phoenix. But there are a few things, and if you're a company trying to scale at this rate, you have to do before you can do this. The first thing is you have to have a core mission that people can understand and relate to. Uh, this is what's gonna convince these people to come and work together on your product. The second thing is you have to find something that people are going to be uh, attracted to and have the funding in order to make that happen. Um, so if you, you either have to have a revenue stream or you have to have investment from places. Um, and the final thing that you need to do is be able to scale your recruiting processes. And so for Yelp, it was quite easy. They had a very, very simple mission. It was connecting people to great local businesses, and funding was never a problem. They had a very good revenue stream coming in from their um, advertisement platform, but the only thing that was kind of a problem was scaling at this point. Uh, recruiting scaling in particular was one of the most difficult things because I didn't know it at the time, but in order to hire one engineer at Yelp, they ended up speaking to 150 applicants, interviewing about 50 to 100 of them, and at the very end of that, one engineer would come out. And so you can imagine, if you're growing from 120 to 5,000, that's quite a feat. You might be asking, why would you do all of that? Um, it's actually quite normal in Silicon Valley as well as successful companies in the United States. Mark Zuckerberg has a really famous phrase where he says, a great engineer is worth 100 engineers. And this is something that I see repeated at all of our customers that utilize our product, as well as many, many successful companies. And so if you're scaling to, say, 5,000 engineers, you're going to have to do over 2 million interviews. And that's a, lot of, that's a lot of work. So the United States actually hires 63.4 million people per year. I guess that's uh, like hiring Korea every single year. Um, and the cost of hiring is quite high. Uh, for a medium-sized enterprise, actually, uh, that's $1 million a year that they spend just scheduling interviews. And for a large enterprise, it's actually $2.3 million. Um, companies like Amazon spend $19 million uh, upwards into that per year scheduling interviews. We built a tool that allowed these companies to actually just spend a fraction of that and still have the efficiency while maintaining the quality that was necessary to scale these companies out. 
And so a little less than a year after we opened our pri uh, product out, out of private beta, we were able to work with some wonderful companies like Airbnb, Snapchat, Dropbox, and Stripe. You might know some of these brands because they're uh, what Silicon Valley calls unicorns. They're valued over a billion dollars and they're growing like crazy. But before I go into kind of what the product does, uh, I'm gonna rewind a little bit and tell you how we got started. So two years ago, uh, these are the co-founders of Good Time sitting around the table at the Salesforce $1 million hackathon. And so at that time, we were getting really bored of our day jobs. And despite all the bright and shiny things that you can do in Silicon Valley, uh, every once in a while, you want to get out and be creative and connect to things. And so we would kind of channel this creativity in these weekend hackathons that we would at attend. If you've never been to a hackathon in Silicon Valley, one of the best things, and the thing that I love the most about it, is you gather 700 to 1,000 of the brightest, smartest, and most talented designers and engineers. You cram them into a room for one to three days, give them a theme, and at the end of that, the people who work the hardest, the people who come up with the best ideas, the fastest and the most efficiently, will end up winning. And these are some wonderful things that come out, and it's, you know, there's a lot of camaraderie there, as you, as you can see. Well, it turned out that we were quite successful at doing hackathons. We, were, we won everything from prizes to cash to even Bitcoin. Um, the, one of the last hackathons that we made, uh, we, we won some money off of was uh, building an instant money transfer platform using Bitcoin. This was in 2015, uh, where we won at the time what was worth 10,000 Bitcoin. Um, it was 33 Bitcoin at the time. So today, I think that's worth $225,000, and at its peak, I think well over $700,000. We knew that we had a good team, but one of the things was that we wanted more. We wanted to see what was coming ahead of us. We knew we could build products quickly, um, but we wanted to kind of dive into the next chapter of our lives. So in October, we decided to quit our jobs, all of us, 2000, um, and just uh, build a startup together. Um, we didn't really know what we were doing at the time. Uh, we left the comfort of you know, our day jobs, and fortunately, we landed a really, really awesome office. Look at that view. It's beautiful, right? Um, but that's kind of where the perks ended. We would spend the next six months eating peanut butter sandwiches and basically walking in circles trying to figure out what to do. Because actually, in Silicon Valley or anywhere in Korea, if you're building a startup and you're not solving a real problem, you'll die very, very fast. The funny thing and the most ironic thing was this problem was sitting right in front of us the entire time we just didn't see it. Fortunately, as luck would have it, during one of our hackathons, we actually ran into, this is Brittany here, she was at the time a recruiter at Coinbase, and she had the exact same problem that the recruiters at Yelp, when I was there, um, were running into. She was spending 60% of her day scheduling interviews when really she should be finding the top talent so that she can match them to her team and quickly grow and make Coinbase successful. That's when we knew that even though the problem was clearly defined, if we didn't go in and figure it out ourselves, we really weren't gonna fully understand it and be able to solve the problem. So our CEO, this is Adyan, she went undercover uh, at a very, very, um, I guess it's super up and coming B2B uh, startup in Silicon Valley, and she was a recruiting coordinator there. You might not know what it is if you're not in the recruiting industry, but that's somebody who spends 80 to 90% of the day scheduling interviews. And from there, she did everything from digging through people's calendars, finding optimal panels, and getting yelled at by hiring managers. It was truly a humbling experience for her, but it was exactly what we needed to fully understand this problem. And while she was going deep into one company, I was going wide. I decided to go and talk to as many companies that would give me their time, and spent all the time talking to the recruiting teams at various different places to figure out, is this actually a problem, and what kind of problem is this? And after months of investigation and figuring that out, we actually discovered that this was a very, very consistent problem and that there might be actually a light at the end of the tunnel. We had found our problem. It turns out that what you might think is very simple to schedule an interview actually has many, many different variables. Anything from candidates' availability to the school that they went to, teams, seniority, skill sets, 
even the product, project load at the time, in particular interviewer preferences and locations, all came into, into play when you were scheduling an interview. And these things are constantly shifting and moving. And so for a human being to do this, we didn't know this, but at the time, nine minutes to schedule a very basic interview up to 25 minutes. So if you go back to that two, two million interviews, you can see how much time that actually is wasted scheduling interviews across the United States. Uh, to kind of paint a clearer picture, we'll give an example. So let's say that you're, you're interviewing Sabrina. She's a front-end engineer who's applying to Airbnb. And on her resume, it says she's a uh, pro at JavaScript, CSS, and React. There are over 2,000 engineers at Airbnb that could probably take this interview, but only a fraction of them know JS, CSS, and React. And even after that, since Sabrina is actually not fresh out of school, you don't want to pair her with somebody who's new grad. You want to make sure that they have at least three years of experience or more so they can have a good conversation. Sabrina also went to Stanford. And so if she's a really great candidate and you want to close her, you probably want to put somebody in the room that can relate to her. Uh, so that furthers down the list even more. And after that, she said she's available on Thursday. And so now you got to take your interviewers and the pool that you had and narrow them down to the people who are actually free on Thursday to take an interview. And if your interviewers are always interviewing, they're not going to be able to do their job. And so you have to make sure that you evenly balance out the load across the different interviewers that are possible to take a job. So then you end up with this small subset here, and you get this interview match. Perfect, right? Like I said earlier, this process takes up to 25 minutes, sometimes even an hour and a half at a very, very large company when you have not hundreds, but thousands of people who could potentially take that interview. We ended up taking uh, a couple more months to product ideate and get feedback from our users. And it was great because the problem, when, you, when you're solving a problem that is such a pain at these companies, they're more than willing to give you feedback. And so we took that feedback, put it into charts to figure out what we need to build first and focused all of our energy and using the same style, like hackathon style that we did before, we just started building as fast and as uh, efficiently as possible to solve one problem after another to eventually build out good time. Now I come back to Yelp, and the reason why is once you have a product, you actually need someone to use it in production to, act, uh, to validate whether or not it works. And so luckily for me, at that time, Yelp was experiencing a shortage in manpower uh, while there was an oncoming huge growth period for them as uh, university recruiting was about to pick up. So they offered to go ahead and test out an early, early version of our product. After three months of failure and rebuilding, we actually got kind of the moment where we re realized that I think we have something here. One of our users pinged us, super excited, on our Slack channel, saying, never have I ever been able to schedule a PM interview so quickly. At that time, it used to take her 25 minutes to schedule an interview. She had just scheduled it inside of four minutes, and this is after you know, months and months of iterating to get to this point. But it was that moment that we realized, oh my gosh, we have something. Soon after, we would receive our first check, um, which really meant that the months of working hard late nights, eating peanut butter sandwiches, and getting feedback from people were starting to finally pay off. And we continued to iterate. So once we had the baseline product, we wanted to make sure that it was going to be continually more optimized and allow uh, people all over to be able to schedule quickly and efficiently. So what you're seeing here is actually a candidate filling out their availability. In the back end, all that computation that has to go through that, that recruiting coordinator would do is happening on the fly, negotiating the, uh, the interview and then scheduling it on everyone's calendar. After building the candidate, what we call the candidate flow, um, the really cool part was that we started getting some amazing feedback. And it wasn't from recruiters. It was actually from the candidates that were applying to these jobs. On a side note, really digging the clean scheduling interface. Awesome. This is the smoothest process I've ever seen. Your system rocks. So if your customers are receiving compliments from their customers, who are essentially the the uh, candidates that are coming inbound, they're going to be very, very happy with your product. And so that was kind of the leverage that we started using. Uh, and at that point, um, I think the 
interview scheduling uh, in, in Silicon Valley started shifting. And so that was roughly Q2 of 2017 when we started receiving massive, massive inbound referrals from our existing clients. So the people who are using our software were getting this feedback from their candidates saying they love scheduling through, the, through it, and they started rec recommending us to their peers who are working at other companies. So this is a photo of recruiting operations dinner here. Um, it looks like a very regular photo, but what you're seeing here is actually uh, people who represent over $85 billion in, um, in valuation. So each one of these people is a recruiting operations manager who solves the problem of making sure that their companies can scale their recruiting processes. And we're very fortunate to have them at our table having discussions and talking about good time. So one of the great things about this methodology is that you foster a community to help grow your product, but you can also collect feedback at the same time and listen to how they share your company's information as well as the, the experiences they had with your product with other people all over casual dinner, you know. We're very, fu we're very fortunate to actually, in addition to having success with customers, um, be able to work with, I think, some of the most uh, brilliant and courageous investors that I would ever say. The reason why I say courageous is when you invest in a company, oftentimes at the stage that we were at, you're not really investing in something that's sure fire. You're taking a big risk and a big chance. And so Phil Yoon, who you'll meet later, um, was one of our first investors at Big Basin Capital. And he actually introduced us to Liputan, who was who is the CEO and founder of Walden VCs. Uh, and so we were able to just take the product that we had, the traction that we had, and now take it completely to the next level uh, with funding in hand. Um, and so this is the team today. Actually, we, we have a few more people that joined afterwards. But my call to action today for you guys is, you know, if this is a problem that you experience at your company, or, you know, this is if you're interested in startups, you know, or, you know, if you're an engineer who likes machine learning, JS, React, um, please come afterwards and talk to me. I'd love to talk to you about uh, the team, about our core mission, which is pretty simple. We believe in the fact that people make companies great, not the other way around. So every company that you see out there that's successful is successful because of the people that are there. And so the greatest thing about working at Good Time right now is the fact that I get to help companies around the world, some of the top brands that you recognize like Airbnb, Stripe, and Dropbox, grow their teams. And essentially, what I'm doing is helping them become great companies. And so we'd love to have you guys stop by and have a chat. Kamsamnida.